Welcome to Wildly Basic. We I have a special guest in the studio today, and I have not seen her in like years, actually. Yeah, years. <laughs> so uh, today we have Michelle Caravalla in the studio from the Killer Flamingos. Hello. 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 It's nice to see you. Nice it's so see nice. You. It's been a long time. I know. Um, so how long has Killer Flamingos been playing together, you guys? Well, the Killer Flamingos as a band have been around since 1994. Mm-hmm. So it's a really, really, really long time. But... Uh, this formation of the band with um, with the people that are in it now started at the end of 2000. Mm-hmm. So the newest member of the band is Tim, and he's been in the band for like 12 years now. So oh, jeez. Yes, yeah. it's been almost 20. Yeah, I think I met you in 2001. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, at that one bar on 10 Mile Land. <laughs> You know, that one bar. B-dubs, or I can't remember. It's not there anymore, but it was fun, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say that. Hey, they're all fun if we're there. I, well, okay, they are fun, actually. <laughs> but, um, okay, so at uh, what age were you interested in music? So when did you know music was your thing? Do you remember that far back? <laughs> yeah. oh, it's been a long time. I'm teasing you. Uh, okay. When I get asked that question, the thing that you generally comes to mind is... Um, I went to a, a private school mm-hmm. when for elementary school. It was affiliated with the church that I, I went to growing sure. up. And uh, when I was in sixth grade, like I'd always done choir. It was just part of what you did. You were, you were in choir. It wasn't like a choice. You were oh, just in choir. That's awesome. I wish I'd do that now. I know, right? <laughs> uh, I think a lot more people would discover a musical talent they didn't know they had. But that's true. I would agree with that. That's it would, true. It you wouldn't get, start playing yeah. the drums at 56. <laughs> well, I think it, it just gets cultivated from that sure. early or recognized. Uh-huh. And if it gets recognized, it gets encouraged. And, and that's kind of where I found it. I mean, they gave me, you know, solos in church and things like that. But um, when I was in sixth grade, they decided to do a, a musical, like an all-school musical. And the sixth through eighth graders could be involved. And Mrs. Helt, uh, Carol Helt, who was still very close with my parents, um, mm-hmm. She directed it, and she was our, our choir director, and she gave me the lead role, and that was the bug that, that okay. was it. So what was it like being on the stage for the first time in the lead role? Oh, really? I just remember it being really exciting that my dad built the costumes. It was a Christian kids musical. It uh-huh. was called, ready for this, Salty Sing-Along-A-Thon, Maranatha Marathon, Hallelujah Jubilee. Now that's, that's a wow. title. <laughs> and I played a very large blue book Oh. named okay. Salty, who was actually a man who had a wife and kids in the, uh-huh. but I was in a big blue book costume that my dad made. My dad made the sets. That's everything. awesome. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I remember sang. some of the, so- the songs and everything. And then afterwards, <laughs> how'd you feel about it? You wanted to do it again? Yeah. I mean, as soon as it was, you know, mm-hmm. that, that theater bug even more than the music bug, because that's always what I wanted to do. Right. So. so when you were a kid, what, what kind of music did you listen to? I listened to the Beatles a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, my first, I'd say, foray into any kind of um, like real rock music to influence, you know, just mm-hmm. say like this is this moves me and mm-hmm. things. It was probably U two, okay. the Rattle and Hum album. Right, it was one of the first I ever got that made me go, oh my god, this is something you can do, like, <laughs> you know, life changing kind of. Yeah. But yeah, the Rattle and Hum album and the Beatles were my cousins were very uh, hippie esque and they. Uh, I mean, not genuine because they weren't born then, but they were hippie-esque. And they would give me these uh, mixtapes. And mm-hmm. they had a lot of Beatles on them and a lot of uh, um, Dr. Demento. And I just loved all of it. That's awesome. Uh-huh. What a mix that is. I know, right? But, yeah. <laughs> so, th- yeah, it's a lot of that. Maybe some, like, Eric Clapton and, yeah. and things like that. But I've, I've always really loved pop music. I think it's why I like the Beatles so much. Mm-hmm. So did you sit in your room and sing and sing and sing? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, do the thing where you, you know yeah. we kind of age myself dramatically here, but like you do, where you record, you try and catch the song on the radio yes. and record yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Like all day you're sitting there and you're waiting. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> and That's where crazy. It, when it started with the the dual cassette recorders, where I could record myself singing and then record myself singing a harmony and Isn't that add awesome? to it. Yeah. That's Before there were any extra tracks on anything. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I, would do, mm-hmm. I would do that too. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right. So here you are. You're singing and you like it and stuff. So what? How did you find out about the Killer Flamingos? Uh, oh boy. Were you in another band before the Flamingos? I was for a little while. Uh, a friend of mine called me one day and she said, my boyfriend and his friends, they're getting together in their basement and they, um, 
they're going to jam and they, they want a girl to come and sing. And uh, she was like, they asked me to come and I want you to come. And I was like, they didn't ask me to come. I don't want to come. <laughs> so I said, oh, 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 I'm not going to do that, right. you know. And uh, she was like, just come with me. Just come with me. I'm like, I don't know any of these people. You know, I'd never sang with a band other than in, like an orchestra before. And was that wasn't anything I would possibly be even slightly cool enough to do. Right. You know, so she forced me to go with her. And <laughs> I went with her and I ended up singing a couple songs at the end. I know one of them was Zombie. And uh, oh, literally zombie. from day one. Yeah. Zombie. Uh, <laughs> zombie. That's like good. She sings a good Zombie. Now, yeah. Yeah. It's like the band's signature song. It is. Nice. Years later. But this is, I was 20 at the time, and if even that. And uh, the, the next day she said, uh, he, the guy from the band, Dave, she was like, he wants your, your number. He wants to see if you want to sing with them. And I'm like, what? That's awesome. That's not a thing I can do. And she's like, well, you, can, you know, can I give him your number? I said, yeah. And then so I ended up with them for I, like a couple of years. But we only played a couple times a month. You know, they were all... They were, I think at the time, I want to say, I think they're all about seven or eight years older than me. Mm-hmm. So, because I know I just got the graduation party invitation from mm-hmm. one of their kids. Uh, so uh, they were all full-time jobs. You know, they graduated from college and they had full-time jobs and one of them was married and, you know, and I was just this kid. I, you know, I had no clue what I was doing. So I just kind of did what they told me and we played a couple shows a month at like the well in downtown and we also played at um Falls Porch Lounge in Dearborn mm-hmm. and the Killer Flamingos played there as well and uh I got introduced to them because my the drummer in that band snuck me into Simons and Allen Park to see them because he wanted me to see a band that was like what we were kind of trying to do right and they were the most popular band at the time so uh he stuck me in there to see them, and they still had um, a female singer at the time. They still had Noreen, who's still singing. She's awesome. Uh, and I saw them and was like, "Well, I, you know, I can do that. I'm like, I think I can do that." And he's like, "Well, that's why I wanted you to see it, so you could, so you could see, like, you can, you can totally do this. This mm-hmm. is something you can do." So I played with them for a couple of years and met the Killer Flamingos in the process because we played at the same bar. After um, Noreen had left the band, it was just the four guys, and I met them and kind of became friends with them and then became good friends with the drummer. Right. And would sit in with them every time I came to see them. And they decided to restructure the band. It was like late-ish, uh, 2000. They decided they wanted to do more things. They wanted to go do bigger gigs and what were they playing better then? places. They were, they were just playing a few little bars. They weren't doing okay. a ton, you know. They were playing every Thursday and Sunday at Falls in Dearborn. Mm-hmm. And then they would go play like Boulders in Plymouth or just a few gigs, you know. They weren't doing as much as they had in the past and they wanted to do more. Right. And so two of them very much wanted to do more and two of them didn't. So um, the two that wanted to asked me to join eventually. Mm-hmm. And uh, after a lot of me asking if they wanted a girl back in the band. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's, I heard that you were bugging them because you're like, oh, you want to be in the band. I, yeah, cause just because it's every time I would come and sit in, it was just such energy. And it felt right. The idea of doing that full time was great. And my band didn't play a lot. So um, that ba- they split and uh, they asked me to join and we put an ad in the Metro Times because there still wasn't a lot of online activity at the time. Right. And that's how we found uh, my guitar player and my bass player together. They had known each other for years. So. Right. Todd and Todd Dave. And David, yeah. Yep. And they're still in the band. Still in the band. That's so awesome. So the only thing that's changed is the drummer. So uh, let's see. When I met you was 2001, and you guys have been together since I've met you. What's it like when you first started playing with them as far as hanging out with the, du- with the guys <laughs> and traveling? Because you guys. That's a big question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, compared to today, I'm sure today's more mellow, but uh, what was it like being in with the guys? It's not like we were ever super crazy anyway. We're not yeah. really huge, crazy people. You know, it's not, it's a big party thing. Or sure. Anything. I mean, when I started in the band, I was 23, mm-hmm. you know, and the guys are a little older than me. So a lot of them like, that kind of already had that partying thing out of the way, and I was never really a partier. I was mm-hmm. kind of a really sheltered kid. And I've never touched a drug in my life ever, yeah. which is always surprised the hell out of people. Like, 
I don't. I don't. I don't judge anybody for anything. No like weed. Very, very sincerely. No. Oh. I, but no. No. Okay. I've never smoked right. weed. I've never done anything. I don't judge anybody at all, all right. for it. But I, but I just don't. Okay. I think at this point in my life, I'm just like I think I'd probably like it too much. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was. I mean, we were all a lot closer in the mm-hmm. beginning, but you know, 20 years. Did you feel like a mom in that band or? I uh, like you're a I big sister. I wasn't a big sister because I was you the younger. youngest one. Yeah, the little I, sister. Yeah, kind okay. of in the beginning. All right. Yeah, I'd just say wondering. a little little sister, yeah. and now probably more mom. You know, mm-hmm. but I mean they're grown men. I mean we went from everyone was single when we started to th- we have six kids between us now. Right. So we have right. three of us are married. We have six kids between us. And you have a child. And I you do. have Arlo. I have Arlo. Mr. Yeah. Arlo Cash. When did you have him? I love that name, oh Arlo gosh. Cash. Yeah. It's gotta, if you're gonna name a How, human, six, it better right? have a badass name, right? Yeah. Right. He will be six at the end of August. Right. Yeah. Best thing to ever happen? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Of course. He's a handful, though. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna. So he's super intelligent. BS about motherhood. That so it's he's not, super like, intelligent. He tries to outsmart you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does. I mean, <laughs> he's yeah his teachers are all i mean i don't want to be that parent but he this teachers are like he's he's too smart for his own good because I mean, he'll he gets around any consequences because you know oh okay the minute you set a consequence he finds a way to make that consequence not a consequence anymore <laughs> he's very very smart. i like him already and yeah. i've never met him <laughs> he's a handful though he's like you know i i joke with people that I'd heard the phrases like strong-willed and mm-hmm. and um, high-spirited and stuff right. like that but i didn't realize they were like actual things mm-hmm. till I made one. Right. And yeah, he is all that. He is very strong willed, very independent, no fear. High spirited kid. He's yeah. It's gonna be a ride. Yeah, and every I know that everything that makes him a challenge right now is gonna make him like the raddest adult ever. Yes. But he's gonna do something. I'm very grand tired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, don't blame me. Okay, so uh the Killer Flamingo is pretty popular very successful thank god right you yes. guys where do you play oh good where don't we play? i know yeah. well you don't play too much up here or in well, open county over here. the years um as we've uh grown in and and as we've gotten older and as we've you know want to make more of a living and, and mm-hmm. things like that it, we've shifted a lot more toward corporate and weddings and festivals because sure. that's just a better way to make a living yeah so but you got to stay in the bars and in those kind of venues mm-hmm. to get new clients right that's just how that goes so right. but we've been uh, i can't express how fortunate i feel and right. how because you're playing casinos and yeah we do a lot of casinos now too yeah the there's mori right yeah the mori and royal oak um uh one under in livonia is kind of like mm-hmm. home to right. us Kind of like our home kind base. Of figured that, yep. Yeah, so the owners there are mm-hmm. incredibly kind, and they they treat us like family, and they're mm-hmm. amazing. Brian's Brian Tamina owns it. He's the sweetest. You guys still play at Uptown Grill? Uh, we did occasionally. Um, we did in the winter mm-hmm. uh, a few times. I don't think we're. I don't think we have anything coming up there, but it's mm-hmm. certainly on the radar. Okay. Of places I was just wondering. Mm-hmm. So people in the area of Waterford, White Lake and stuff could come and see you. Yeah. Because that's where they go a lot. I heard they're building um, a mori across the street-ish from there, too. They are? They're building a bunch of stuff out there. So that's I'm betting awesome. we'll, we'll end up back out there at some point in time. Yeah. Right. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So fortunate. I mean, to not have to actually, like, really seek things out too much and have everything be able to choose and... and quality over quantity Mm -hmm. you know instead of playing five nights a week every single week you know in the winter there's plenty of weeks where we don't play nearly that much and you know you can have a little bit more of an adult life and family (laughs) and you know and we can do that now because like I said quality over quantity but you have to reach a certain point of skill before you can well, do yeah. those quality you have to be gigs. highly professional to play corporate right. and in in the casinos yeah really yeah there's lots of roles yeah, yeah <laughs> but it, you know it makes you really makes you really good at things like when we first started playing weddings we were terrible at weddings like i can't believe anybody let us play their <laughs> wedding because we played in the beginning a lot of obscure stuff which is really fun and right. really cool and can, will make you no money and get you no jobs okay so now it's, you know, we know what we need to play. And, and what do you play? To, I mean, we play anything now from standards and Motown to, you know, the newer poppy dance R&B stuff that, right. you know, you know, with a bunch of rap in it. And so if you have to 
you have to gotta keep up with the times, but you have to be able to play a giant. Have, range. have you noticed noticed a shift? Because um, I did. I don't know. I've noticed a mm, shift where it was poppy, it was yeah. super poppy, yeah. and then all of a sudden now the kids are starting to sing back in the '80s, '90s oh, yeah. music, which is there's the best. been massive <laughs> so, shifts. Yeah, yeah. So now years. it's kind of shifting back. Uh, the kids around here will be singing classic, um, like anything. What, what what were they singing the other day? Oh, oh, hit me with your best shot. Yeah. I'm like, how I do you know I had that 10 song? year olds in front of me at a festival the other day um, singing Don't Stop Believing. Yeah. 10 year olds. They all know it. Screaming. Because their parents, yeah. how do you know that? My right. parents have it on all the time. It's the same as me liking Elvis. Right. And Barbara Streisand. Mm-hmm. And right. And Neil Diamond. You right. Know, it's the same. My cousin, because my mom listened right. to it. Right. Well, I'm happy. Because my that parents are older. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm happy that it's starting to shift back. Because that's yeah. what we play. It happy. always yeah. will. Yeah. You know. <laughs> What's the best thing you like about your job? The best thing I like about my job, all the incredible people I meet. Right. Absolutely. Right. No question. I, I have so you. many amazing people in my life that I never would have met without this job that I'm, I, absolutely. Right. I mean, for every person that you meet that you wish you hadn't met, there's 20 incredible people that I'm so lucky to be able to be that person that someone says, hey, do you know a guy that I got a guy for everything because mm-hmm. I've met everyone. Right. And people, you know, it just. That's just, perfect, actually. Electrician? Yeah, I know. Yes. <laughs> a daily restoration of your faith in humanity. Yes. Because, you know, you get, there really are so many good people. Like, you know, it's really hard, obviously, the way the world is now to not be like, oh, God, everybody sucks. But I know so many amazing people, and I, I wouldn't. That would not happen without the band. There's no way. My world is so much bigger because of the band than it would be if I, you know, mm-hmm. was in a cubicle somewhere. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, you do the Ryan and Michelle show? I do. Tell us what it is. The Ryan and Michelle show. The about, Ryan and Michelle show. I know. The, the, the super clever, we don't want to think of a name, name. Uh, <laughs> it is... It, it's exactly that. It's just uh, Ryan. Uh, Ryan Ruiz is one of my closest friends, and I've known him for probably around 20 years now. And uh, we just have, we think a lot alike, and we have a lot of fun together. And he's a really talented musician, although he'll constantly tell you he's not. But he's extremely talented. Mm-hmm. He plays guitar and bass and and sings. And he was in a another band um, called The Underdog. That's one of my favorite bands, and I'm sad they're not playing anymore. But uh, I'd say about eight, nine years ago now. I can't believe it's been that long. But we were singing karaoke. Might have been under the influence of a little bit of whiskey. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> we sang karaoke together, and we were like, what's the cheesiest 80s duet we can possibly come up with? And let's sing it. So we sang uh, Sometimes Love Just Ain't Enough. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, I actually have a picture of us singing it. Mm-hmm. Somebody took a picture of us that day, and we were like, we should just, like, do an acoustic show. And, and here we are. You've been doing it for nine years? It's been, like, nine years. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. So we started out doing it um, at One Under. It didn't really work there. Mm-hmm. And we took it to um, the Grasshopper Underground in Ferndale. Mm-hmm. It was a, a lot. We lived out there, so a lot of our friends were uh, in that area. And that worked, and it was a fun, and it's a tiny little place. And... We have a bunch of our friends come up and sit in, and uh, and then I got put on bed rest when I was pregnant and had to take a break. And uh, when I came back, we started it back up at Fifth Avenue. Mm-hmm. And uh, just downstairs, very laid back. I mean, we literally just set up like right there on the floor in the middle of the tables, and we're constantly talking with everyone and joking around and being inappropriate. and. <laughs> There's might be a little drinking involved, and <laughs> it's a lot of service industry people, and it's just our friends, uh-huh. and and it's it's ridiculous, and I can't believe they pay us to do it, and and, <laughs> and awesome. feed us, and all that good stuff. They're so good to us, and mm-hmm. it just works. It's just a fun little silly laid back thing we do. We get to play whatever we want. And what days is this now? Um, In case we somebody do, wants to go and watch. We joke about that we play almost every Tuesday. All the good ones. Mm-hmm. We play all the good ones. Uh, so any Tuesday that um, I'm not booked with the band or Ryan isn't doing something else for work or something mm-hmm. going on, we will generally do. Sometimes we take like one off a month, and our friend Josh Clemens will fill in. He's crazy talented. Um, right. But uh, So usually th- three Tuesdays a month we do it. It'll be a little less in the summer because I'm out of town a lot. But 
Okay. Yeah, it's just Tuesdays, and it's like we have nine thirty ish to whenever we feel like not doing it anymore. It's really fun. It was it was a really good thing for my brain to go do and just be free and sing whatever you feel yeah, like singing. I think it really, really, really did a lot to make me a much better performer and a much oh, better sure. singer. It gave me a lot more confidence. Right. Like in the beginning, if you would have asked me to just try to sing something I'd never sang in front of other people, there's no way I would have done it. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the last time Ryan and I learned a song not in front of other people. We, we just, people yell well, out see, a song and we try it. That's what I wanted you to do today. Yeah. But you're like, it's too early in the morning yeah. to sing. And I get it's it. not early in the morning. It's well, just, I, I know it. I got yeah, that's exactly what we were going to do was the same thing with the karaoke. Like, oh. We were going to pick a song for you, and you <laughs> had to sing it. But we'll do it a different time. Okay. That's all right. Not I'm down for it a different time. I need yeah. to be more mentally prepared for that. <laughs> but that's all right. Yeah, um, but I, I never, ever would have done anything like that. But having Ryan next to me and, and uh, having to be such a good friend and so supportive and encouraging mm-hmm. and, and, frankly, so, like, whatever about things that – it just created an environment where I could just try and do anything and it and try and if I failed it didn't matter so much mm-hmm. it was you know the stakes were a lot lower and right. and not that we don't want it to be a good show we do but it turns out it is good because I'm so relaxed mm-hmm. and so so um before I forget what kind of music do you have on your playlist like on your phone or you know I, people ask me that all the time and I primarily listen to podcasts I know that's kind oh. of fun. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. Um, I think maybe my ears are a little musicked out sometimes. So, oh, okay. Um, just, you know, soaking in it all the time, working in it, around it. I mean, I listen to a lot of music too, but mostly podcasts. Like, if I'm going to just turn something on in the car, on the way. Favorite podcast that you listen to? Oh, my God. I have so many favorite podcasts. Pick one. Criminal. What is it? It's Phoebe Judge. Um, she does. Uh, the podcast is just called criminal and okay. she tells stories about criminals and but it's but it's always a, a weird uh it's not like some guy killed another guy it's some it's some whacked out weird story about it's really interesting and it's really intelligent mm-hmm. and phoebe judge has the best voice <laughs> ever she just has the most soothing voice and she actually just started another podcast called this is love okay kind of just another mm-hmm. her style but about love instead of criminal acts or whatever right. and she i just love her voice so, so check out criminal yeah when you're out there on the podcast sure. going to any concerts this summer it's so hard for me to get to a concert uh, because we're playing so much um that's I know right because it's saturday sunday usually most of them yeah uh, most wednesday of them. thursday yeah i mean in the summer it's up we play almost every day so okay. it's but um I know that Lake Street Dive is coming back to the Royal Oak Music Theater. Mm-hmm. I got to see them there last year, and I will definitely go see them this year. Mm-hmm. She's, she's an incredible vocalist, and they're such a great band. I'll have to check that out. Lake Street Dive, yeah, they're incredible. Mm-hmm. So I'll go oh, see that one, but that's indoors. I didn't go to outdoor concerts. <laughs> so you're involved in a nonprofit organization, Suck at Suicide, <laughs> Six Feet Over. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, sure. Uh, Six Feet Over is a an organization that my friend Katie Hardy started after she lost her mother to suicide. Uh, I want to say, um, I, uh, forgive me, Katie, if I'm wrong, but like, probably eight years ago or so. And it is education and prevention and all things related to suicide and the phenomena of it. Mm-hmm. And um, Suck at Suicide is um, under the umbrella of that nonprofit and it is an organization that helps out the families of people who have died by suicide mm-hmm. helps them with things like funeral costs and therapy and uh, cleanup costs which is something no one ever thinks about right so all of that is very expensive so people uh, families can apply mm-hmm. and then they can get assistance from suck at suicide but they also they're out at festivals and things all the time, so, you know, selling merch and, and giving out uh, mm-hmm. information and, ta- you know, just educating. Yeah, a lot of people have been affected by suicide. I know I have. An unbelievable. You, have you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, everybody has been affected in some yeah. way. So I became involved about um, almost four years ago now mm-hmm. where uh, I lost one of my best friends to suicide. And I very much wanted to um, give him a little of a legacy that was not right. just the guy that died by suicide right. so because uh, he was one of my favorite humans mm-hmm. so um we throw a bir- we were, we would throw a birthday party for him every year or rather he would throw it for himself uh mm-hmm. at royal uh, Lo- uh, luna right and he would throw himself this birthday party every year and i think by the time he passed away we were on like the sixth year or something um and 
he wanted everyone to wear cut off jean shorts and he wanted to eat hot pockets that was his only little pun on mm -hmm. things and uh so he passed away in july or in august in his birthdays in july and we had just had the party and one of the first things i thought is well we still have to have a party we still have to have his birthday party right and then as it started coming around again i said well i'm still going to throw this party but if we're going to throw it then let's make it for a reason yeah. so um i wanted to initially give the money to a different charity that he had done some work with but um i also wanted a suicide related charity and a mutual friend rob bird who i went to high school with and is in the underdog pointed out hey we have this friend and she has this organization you should talk to her so i reconnected with katie and uh that's that's how i got so lucky as to be involved mm -hmm. with such a rad person with an incredible she's incredible awesome. she's an incredible human and she does incredible things well, that's a good thing you're doing i like i said i just want his legacy to be yeah you know. no, not about so, the day but about right. who he was right 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 so we do the party we do the party every year and we've done uh three now mm -hmm. and we raise between 2500 and 3000 every time so far and then Sometimes Ryan and I will do a show and benefit. We do, you know, I do mm -hmm. whatever I can and just try and get it out there and try and use any visibility I have to, yeah, to get the, get word, the word out. out. Yeah, yeah, and you know, people are so responsive and so incredible. I did one of those Facebook fundraisers last year for my birthday. Mm. Yes, I remember. People raised an ungodly <laughs> amount. I, th yeah. I think I set the goal at like two hundred bucks, and I ended up with like twenty six hundred. Yeah, or she did really crazy. good. Crazy. <laughs> So I, I think those are so popular now that I don't know that I could be that successful this year, but I'm, I'll find a way, man. I oh, have a, you're gonna be successful. I have I'm a goal sure. of five thousand dollars for them every year. So yeah, you could do that. Fingers crossed. Easy peasy. Help me out, y'all. <laughs> stuck. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is gonna be the. L oh, we almost forgot your joke too. Oh okay. my gosh. So do you have any advice for future singers? Future singers. Uh, chasing after their dreams. Who? What would you say to the uh, young females out there that want to be singers? Or males. Just do it. I mean, it's it sounds like such a ridiculous thing, but it's just get yourself out there in front of people as much as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's if, if if being a performer is what you want to do. I mean, a lot of people, I think a lot of people's aspirations now are like behind a mic in a studio. But if you want to be a performer, the best possible thing you can do for yourself is just find literally any opportunity you can to get out and in front of people and get yourself as comfortable as possible. Like, find all the open mics. Get in the faces of people who are in bands. We just did that. Yeah. Our band just yeah. did that last Tuesday. T seriously, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was, like, nerve-wracking, but we did it. So, yeah. And they're only going to get better for it every single yeah. time. You get more comfortable every time. And it, it, I mean, to think of how long it took me to have, like, full confidence in myself as a performer I mean, not that you're not, I'm not always trying to improve because I am, but, right. you know, to have that full people like, do you get nervous? I'm like, no. I mean, I actually don't it's believe the whole, you now. should always be nervous. I don't really believe in that necessarily. Right. I think I'm a much better performer when I'm fully comfortable. Mm -hmm. So, I, yeah, my only advice is just keep, just do it. Just keep doing it. Find any way you can to do it. Go join a choir. Go join a theater troupe. Go join whatever you can do. Just mm -hmm. stand in the corner and sing. I don't know. Just keep doing it. Right. Because you're going to, what is not doing it going to do for you? So, all right. So, it's the end of the show, so you have to give us a joke. Oh now, it better be a good joke or you get the... Oh, I will most likely get that because the only <laughs> jokes that I know or remember anymore are the ones that my son tells. Okay. So, I'm going to try to think of a good one. I can't Go ahead. I don't know. I was trying to think of good ones on the way here. Mm -hmm. What sounds just like a parrot but is orange? What? A carrot. It's terrible. I know it's terrible, but when it comes from a five-year-old, <laughs> it's freaking hilarious. <laughs> oh yeah, I bet. Because he thinks it's the funniest thing. In the oh yeah, he probably oh, laughs yeah. his butt off, yeah. and you're like, "Oh, that's nice, honey. <laughs> that's such a nice joke." It's him giggling that makes me. That's giggle. all. Yeah, yeah, good. That's mm. awesome. Okay, that's so where my comedy lies now, right now, in a five-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So if you want to find Michelle, she's at uh, KillerFlamingos.com. True. Right? That's True. where all your events are and stuff that you yeah, can there's uh, a full schedule check there. it out. Mm -hmm. You can check out. Like, you got promos on there and pictures. Mm -hmm. And on f you're also on YouTube quite a bit. Facebook. And Facebook. Yeah. And Instagram. And Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> all over. Got to cover all the faces. <laughs> That's right. You left out Twitter. Oh, yeah. We're Twitter. Actually, yeah. I don't, I don't <laughs> even know if that would. Nobody around here uses Twitter as much as people on the other coasts. Oh. That's true. Uh, I don't. See. I have Twitter, but I don't re use it. So. See? <laughs> I don't know what that is. So, and then um, 
for Six Feet Over, uh, you want to get a hold of them, they are sixfeetover.org. Yes, ma'am. Go to that website and yes, check please. it out. Donate, donate, donate. Donate a lot of money. Tell them I sent you. Yeah, <laughs> Michelle sent you. Actually, I don't care. Just donate. <laughs> All right. So uh, it's nice having you. I haven't seen you in a while. I feel it's, it's good to see you again. It's really good to see you. 